Like, why does he not look insane considering he's the son of the goat? Um, well, that's where we get into the genetic response to drugs because interestingly enough, What's up guys, Derek from ourplacemart8s.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about genetic response in terms of not only as a natural, but in terms of anabolics, pharmacology. There is actually a big difference between how you're gonna look as a natural as well as what you're going to respond like to drugs. So you could actually be, and I've actually seen this numerous times, top natural athletes who look like, you know, cream of the crop. They have like the top, you know, body composition for you know, like 0.0001% of individuals who are natural. But when they take gear, you would expect, you know, they're all going to be the next Phil Heath. Because, of course, you would think the guy who is going to win the Mr. Olympia on gear is probably going to be the same guy who would otherwise win a natural Olympia if he, you know, competed him against the exact same guys all naturally. Sometimes that is the case, but sometimes, and interestingly enough, oftentimes it's not the case. Sometimes you'll have guys who are actually very genetically inferior looking in terms of just actual sheer muscle accrual when they're natural, and they take gear and hyper respond like motherfuckers. Now, a good example, in my opinion, actually is Arnold Schwarzenegger, and this is where we're going to be talking about Patrick Schwarzenegger versus Arnold Schwarzenegger in a good old natty versus juiced, because Arnold is obviously a former sauce fiend and a half the guy used to abuse d ball and prima bowl and out the wazoo as well as a uh, numerous other anabolics probably but most notably those were the two uh, favorites he would use the d ball as his test base essentially and it would drive um the estrogen vector uh, you know his backbone essentially of the cycle and the prima bowl would be the tissue selective anabolic obviously they didn't think of it exactly in that context but ultimately it accomplished that very purpose and it's kind of fucked up how to this day, <laughs> we're still using these same primitive drugs. It's just unfortunate that um, the development of these anabolic agents got uh, stifled because we'd otherwise have probably pretty fucking side effect free compounds at this point, or at least rel you know significantly better if we allowed the further development of these agents throughout the last however many decades. But instead, we're stuck with these same compounds that fucking Arnold was using back in the 70s. So anyways, besides that annoying tangent, this article came up that I got tagged in. Patrick Schwarzenegger said working out at 5 a.m. helped him bulk up and lose body fat. Trainers are say there are advantages to early morning exercise if you can keep it up. So here we see him hitting a fucking bicep shot. Here he is doing curls, giving us the old, uh, it's a good old gun run. He's working out in his gym. He got up at 5 a.m. to work out for 50 days and sell it, said it helped transform his body. He claims he gained 22 pounds while losing 5% body fat and that he is 8%. And that is 8% body fat right now. So here he is, does not look like 8%, dude. Definitely not even there. So obviously a delusional statement for him to be like, first photo, 185 pounds, 8% body fat. Second was 163, 13%. No, you fucking aren't, dude. You're not 8%. We all know that. Unfortunately, the celebrity, I don't know what it is about the celebrities, dude. Like they're just fucking delusional as hell about body fat percentages and metrics. Like we just, I probably just pu published a video about Bryce Hall thinking he gained 40 pounds of muscle like earlier today. Like if the sequence of videos comes out in the order I'm thinking. And um, yeah, I, I don't get it. Especially for a guy whose dad is literally a fucking bodybuilding legend. You would think, <laughs> you would think this guy would have a better understanding of what body fat percentages look like. So anyways, this is, I don't know, what, like 13, 12% maybe. I don't know. But anyways, it's definitely not single digits. Um, you guys can let me know what you think it is in the comments down below. But anyways, it's kind of besides the point, just a little tangent, because uh, sometimes these guys, I guess, need to be uh, fact-checked. And I've actually fallen into that camp, to be honest, too, where I've said, oh, I've gone to single digits before. And like, to be honest, it probably wasn't. But, you know, some of the claims get a bit absurd in the celebrity realm with, you know, 30 pounds of muscle in fucking six weeks and shit like that. So anyways, he thought, like, he mentions how he, you know, made substantial progress and blah, blah, blah. Now, again, this guy isn't new to the gym. He owns a, he has his own fucking gym. He, his dad is a legend, again, of bodybuilding. The guy has been around working out his entire life. Maybe he's, you know, fallen off the wagon a few times and not been as committed as he should, but he's obviously been working out for quite a while, even if it's on or off. So, again, this physique, what is this? Is this like a top, like a 1% physique? Like, I don't know about 1%. It's definitely up there, though. Like, out of every guy at your gym, like, 
every 10 guys, are you going to see somebody who looks as good as this? Like, no, you're not. You're not. Every 10 guys is not going to be a guy with visible abs and visible mass simultaneously, you know, as well as, you know, just having like a decent, having fucking traps, having, you know, decent arm mass with simultaneous ab definition. This is like top, I don't know, one to 5% genetics or something or one to 5% body composition. Now, again, his genetics though, is it top, you know, upper echelon genetics while well, he's the fucking son of Arnold Schwarzenegger. So it makes you question, why does he not look like a fucking fiend? And he looks like just a pretty like athletic, good shaped guy. Like, why does he not look fucking insane considering he's the son of the goat? Um, well, that's where we get into the genetic response to drugs because interestingly enough, Arnold was not actually that genetically superior, at least from a structural aspect. Sure, his arms, his chest, everything was, you know, fucking sick. But he did not really like look super insane until he took gear. You know, we there are actual natural athletes out there who actually look a lot better than Arnold did when he was natural, you know, in teens, in teenage years, like even fucking Mike Thurston, supposedly, you know, of course, if he was natural when he was like 15, 16, 17, when he first started working out, you could say his physique was superior to fucking Arnold's. If you wanted to compare them side by side, if they were both, you know, supposedly natural in their early teen years when they were working out, like there are a lot of, not a lot, but there are individuals with natural physiques that definitely exceed Arnold's. But Arnold, the way he separated himself is when he got on the fucking Sazul, he exploded like a guy who, you know, you would not expect to considering the fact that when he was 16, he started working out at 15. So he goes from after his first year working out, he looks like this, which is, you know, good. He looks fucking good for a 16 year old. Obviously we get to, uh, this is him at 16 hitting at the front double by these chicks are, uh, looking up in awe of this guy's, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, here he's at 17, looking like a jacked swimmer. He is, uh, you know, got the uh, vacuum going here. He's got a little bit of arm mass now. You're starting to see his chest take, you know, more development and whatnot. So he's two years into lifting at this point. So keep in mind, new begins as a natural um, are done. You know, he's made a substantial amount of progress. He's, you know, lifting hard as fuck. You know, his life revolved around this thing at the time. Now, when did he start gear? Purportedly, you know, by him, I believe it was 19 ish that he was talking about when he started, but the rumors going around was that he started as early as 17, 18 years old, popping Diana balls like candy in Germany. And then when he came over to the U S he started to incorporate things like Prima Bowl and alongside it, I spill over my fucking computer, but it's fine. And then that's where he kind of, uh, you know, went a bit more exotic with the, uh, anabolics to stack alongside the Diana Bowl. But again, right now around this time, 17, like he has a physique that many people would consider like, like good. But if you were, even if you were like a natural, like fitness influencer, YouTuber, most people would not be like, this guy is like the fucking cream of the crop, you know, two years into lifting. Like I know, I know certain individuals who are natural after two years of lifting, they look better than this, to be honest. That's not to knock him. It's just to give an example again. The guy who looks the best at baseline isn't necessarily the guy who's going to genetically explode when he takes gear. Now you see Arnold when he starts to, again, here's a 17 year old shot. Like these are very good examples of what, you know, natural foundation can actually do in guys who are not necessarily like here, obviously he's, you know, fucking cranking his face off at this point. So he's 19 here and he gets to, uh, I don't know if this, he was actually 19 here cause this is a substantial fucking jump. But here he is. No, there's no way he's still fucking 19 here, dude. Like some of these compilation videos, I feel like are way off on their timelines. Maybe he is. I don't think he is here though. Here is a 20. I would believe that. Here is a 20 again, supposedly. Anyways, as he gets into his early 20s, he's you know he kind of takes on like prime Arnold shape, and by his uh, early to mid 20s, he's you know starting to crank out fucking Olympias, and he's just smoking dudes on stage and looking like you know classic. Sauce fiend Arnold himself. And, um, but again, relating this back to Patrick, Patrick is a guy who is the same genetics. He has the exact same, well, obviously he has his mom genetics too, but I mean, a lot of what he inherits is going to be from his dad. And you would expect that the guy would have, you know, similar response to things and have a similar foundation in terms of muscle growth potential. And when you look at it, I don't think he has a bad, you know, foundation whatsoever. Like he actually looks pretty fucking good, but you can tell if you're going to compare natural to natural or natty versus juice, when you go back to Arnold back when he was in his supposedly natural years, 
it's not that crazy compared to some naturals now that you would see at, uh, I don't know, in the fitness industry, obviously there are a lot of fake naturals, but there are a lot of individuals who are actually natural. And, you know, sometimes you might not be able to pick them out because it's impossible to fucking tell if somebody's lying unless you elaborately drug test them. But good, a good example might be Lex Little, you know, the guy at 15, 16 years old looked like a fucking twig. And now he's like 19 and uh, or 20. I think he just turned 20 the other day and um looks insane you know when he was 18 19 though he made the majority of his progress in the first couple of years and looked like a guy like on gear like frankly if he posed in some of his pictures alongside two year into lifting arnold you would think lex little looks fucking better than arnold to be honest i know that's a bold statement but it's like just look at the fucking photos it's not that hard to see that lex little has more aesthetic photos two years into lifting than fucking arnold schwarzenegger does but then why is it that all of a sudden arnold blows them out of the water in a fucking year because of the response to the Diana Bull and the Prima Bull. And now, if Lex Little took Diana Bull and Prima Bull, does he mean he's going to look like fucking Arnold did? No, because there's two entirely different things. Even though you could have a natural who's further along in his body composition progression or just has a better potential base as a natural athlete, given your endogenous hormone production, everything else that goes into it, your response to exogenous synthetic chemicals is not necessarily going to be the same just based on the fact that you have a better natural physique. So to me, this was a good example because Patrick is an example of this is legendary genetics. Like he literally has Arnold's fucking genes in him. And yet he looks like just an athletic like surfer dude with abs, you know, I get like I get it by natural standards. This is like it's very good. I can, ex you know, acknowledge it's a very good physique. I'm not trying to downplay it whatsoever, but we're talking about in the context of he has Mr. Olympia fucking genetics in his body. You know, he literally has this guy's fucking <laughs> this guy's ball sack produced this fucking guy. Like the genetics are running in his family down to him. And yet he looks a fraction of Arnold, but he looks, you know, not that dissimilar to Arnold in his teen years. So despite the fact that this guy's been working out for years, he does not build a fucking Olympia caliber physique, but we don't know what his response to drugs is. It could be insane. It could be shitty. Sometimes you have these guys that actually have great looking foundations and they don't end up blowing up. A lot of people don't take into account response to drugs and organ exposure, drug exposure to organ health as well when it comes into the fact of genetics everyone just thinks if i have you know a jack physique as a natural it means i'm going to, to succeed as a bodybuilder who's enhanced too often doesn't play out how come there are physique competitors who literally cannot grow past like 195 shredded on stage no matter how hard they crank and try a lot of them are just fucking stuck and they stay in men's physique because they could not become bodybuilders. A lot of guys in the men's physique division, even though they have literally the best fucking physiques you've ever seen in terms of aesthetic pr proportions and whatnot, you know, perfect six packs, perfect fucking balanced out delts back, you know, everything looks insane and dialed in. A lot of them are just like failed bodybuilders who could not get big enough for bodybuilding, even though they use the exact same shit as classic physique guys. And you know, their, their excuse is often, oh, I don't want to use as much drugs. And it's like, maybe that's the case in some cases, but I can almost fucking promise you, everyone's tried to push the limit to see what their body can do. And a lot of men's physique guys at the top are just guys who couldn't get big enough to do fucking bodybuilding. You know, that's just what it comes down to. Like Jeremy Buendia, for example, guy looks absolutely insane. Literally the definition of men's physique, but no matter how much shit he takes, he would never be a bodybuilder. You know, the, that's why he ended up in men's physique. He was a failed bodybuilder, but had perfect proportions for the board short men's physique di division, essentially. That's not a knock on him, but that's an example of like perfect genetics, but shitty drug response. That's like exactly what we see with certain individuals. Now, Arnold is the total opposite where you see it's not shitty genetics, but it is not like the perfect fucking body composition as a natural, but then he takes D bull and Prima bull and the guy's a fucking Mr. Olympia all of a sudden. So there's a lot of things that come into it. And I think a lot of people over overlook different genetic components of what bodybuilding is. Not only is it your natural foundation, but it's also how you respond to drugs. Like I remember Dennis Wolf, his transformation absolutely bonkers when he started taking drugs. One of the most fucked up mutations you've ever seen. In addition, how long can your organs handle the exposure to these drugs? That's another genetic component too. Guys like, it's a fucking mosquito in my goddamn, <laughs> sorry. Um, the, uh, um, again, stress to organ systems. Like this is something that is genetically determined as well. Even if you blow up because you have sick genetic response to drugs, 
How long can your organs sustain that stress from the exposure to the drugs? Is it something that you can even expose yourself to the drugs because your organs are even going to be healthy enough to fucking survive the duration of exposure? That's the kind of thing that goes overlooked too. And it all comes into the genetic kind of rounding out what is bodybuilding as a whole. It doesn't just play into how sick do you look before you take gear. All the stuff comes into the equation, so to speak, and should essentially be how you determine if this is even something worth pursuing, to be honest. Like, at the end of the day, when you start taking gear, like, you, I feel like you'll know pretty quick if you have what it takes. Like, you'll start, you know, the guys who really made it to the top, and to be honest, I don't think you should be blasting a fuck ton of shit unless you have the potential to make it to the top anyways. Um, cause it's like, what, what are you doing? Trying to become like an op like 260 lean to just fucking walk around on a beach or something. You know, like, uh, is that really worth it? And are you even going to get there? Or are you going to be a guy who's blasting his face off just to be men's physique big for your entire life? And just like, you know, chasing fucking plastic trophies at regional bodybuilding shows all the time. Oftentimes most guys would be best off just, you know, hanging it up and just, you know, being a recreational gym rat and not taking too much shit and just like enjoying the lifestyle and not trying to abuse their bodies in order to replicate something that they simply will not ever be able to do. And it's more of a, this is more of like a reality check video than anything. Cause again, I see a lot of people abuse the fuck out of their bodies, trying to get like Arnold big, trying to get, you know, some uh, top bodybuilder big. And it's just never going to happen because they don't have that genetic response to the drugs, even though they might think, oh, I had, you know, in high school, I had a sick physique. Like I get DMs all the fucking time where it's like, what do you think of my genetics? Like, I don't know, dude. Like, I don't, I don't have fucking imaging of your organ health right now. I don't know what your fucking androgen receptor density is. Like, I can't tell any of this shit based on the fact that you're, you know, 180 at like 8% in high school. Like, yeah, it looks sick. Like, good job. Like, you're a natural phenom for a natural, you know, grade 11 guy. Like, sick, dude. But it doesn't mean I can predict you're going to be an Olympia caliber guy based on all these other factors, which is going to play into it. Like, everyone... If this is something you're serious about, like you really should be getting, in my opinion, baseline blood work, see what your health is at. Is it something you could even sustain? Could you even expose yourself to the drugs needed to get to the top and fucking survive and thrive ideally? You know, organ imaging, do you have some sort of underlying heart condition? Like this is the kind of shit that is genetics above and beyond like what people perceive as fucking genetics. And this is the kind of stuff I feel like most people should have at baseline before they actually pursue this thing full board. Like how many guys have, you know, passed early because they had underlying organ issues that was just completely unaddressed. Like obviously basic shit like blood pressure, like some people overlook that too and it fucks them over. But shit like underlying like a, I don't know, a genetic heart defect, for example, is that something you're going to figure out when you're just determining like, do I have the genetics for bodybuilding based on your response to drugs? Like, no. That's something you'll find out a few, you know, however many years down the line when it bites you in the ass. So this is, again, rounding out the genetic response elements of this entire sport. You know, do more research about yourself, you know, learn if this is something that is actually worth pursuing for you. And in most cases, to be honest, it probably isn't. So anyways, kind of a roundabout way of talking about, uh, you know, staying safe and uh, not unnecessarily exposing yourself to drugs. And, you know, Patrick is a good example of... Uh, you know, I'm assuming he's natural, to be honest, just based on his genetics and the fact that he's working hard now and he's uh, built a very respectable and good physique. Um, but again, does it look anything like his dad? No. And why is that? Because he's not taking fucking gear. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, Bitsu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, my TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. Obviously, if you want to get high quality oversight from patient care coordinators and doctors who know their shit, and uh, I vet myself personally, you're in good hands with my clinic, and we have uh, um, elaborate diagnostics and uh, lab work that are going to be interpreted by professionals who actually know what the fuck they're doing. And um, we're actually building out a platform where you will be able to build your own lab tests as well, which is something that is uh, very, very obvious, but a lot of clinics overlook too. They'll have, you know, a pre-designed, you know, anti-aging panel or a pre-designed whatever the fuck panel, but they don't give you the opportunity to add shit like, what if I want to add total testosterone using liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry to my test without having to add a whole nother clusterfuck of other things that come chunked into it? Like that's the kind of stuff that always annoyed me when I used to shop with, you know, the uh, private um, labs and whatnot, where you'd have to order like a giant clusterfuck of different things in order to get 
a good price for what you actually want. And that is something we're trying to work through right now in order to offer because again, anything I would want to spend money on, I would think, you know, many people here also share similar uh, thoughts. So working on building out a good uh, lab test platform. But for now we have, you know, pre-designed lab tests and diagnostics that you can uh, get that have essentially everything we've deemed, including myself, as uh, you know, the most comprehensive ways, you know, there's the cost effective version, the comprehensive, more expensive versions, blah, 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 to check your overall health, organ function, et cetera. And obviously, you know, above and beyond that, you wanna get imaging at least once a year, in my opinion, but um, at a base level, you need your fucking blood work. So obviously check that out if it is of interest to you um, and anything else I am associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.